while he was in the hospital, he found out that his character sold the radio station and that he wasn't going to be in the show anymore. Martin Lawrence, renowned for his comedic achievements, is often hailed as a trailblazer in the genre. Despite this widespread acclaim, Christopher presents a divergent perspective, characterizing Lawrence not merely as a comedic figure, but also as someone with an alleged arrogant disposition. Christopher delves into what he perceives as Martin's less favorable aspect, and notably, he discusses how Lawrence reportedly orchestrated the sale of Garrett Morris. Throughout his career, Martin Lawrence has confronted a multitude of challenges in the entertainment industry, from cancellations to disruptions in his mental well-being, legal troubles leading to multiple arrests, and various other obstacles, Lawrence has weathered numerous storms. However, prior to his foray into the industry, Lawrence lived a different life. Now, he openly acknowledges the adversaries who aim to cancel him and their efforts to hinder his progress in the entertainment realm. A weak person cannot get to sit here and talk. In a manner reminiscent of Richard Pryor dominating the 70s and Eddie Murphy reigning supreme in the 80s, the 90s saw Martin Lawrence emerge as a dominant force. His journey commenced with a notable film debut, portraying the character C in Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing in 1989. Lawrence further solidified his presence with a scene-stealing performance in House Party and its subsequent installment, The Pajama Jam. The following summer marked a particularly explosive period for Martin, as he secured a supporting role in the underrated Eddie Murphy film, Boomerang. Concurrently, he made his debut as the host of HBO's Deaf Comedy Jam on July 1, 1992, a pivotal day that highlighted his escalating prominence. However, he had some major issues with Garrett Morris. Garrett Morris has enjoyed a lengthy and esteemed acting career, and his role on the popular 90s comedy series, Martin, remains cherished by fans. However, viewers were taken aback when Morris, a full-time cast member in the first two seasons, abruptly disappeared from the series. He made only one additional appearance throughout the show's run. Morris later disclosed that he was dismissed from the show by its lead producer, coincidentally the star himself, Martin Lawrence. Morris, a versatile artist, encompasses the roles of comedian, actor, and singer. Hailing from New Orleans, he developed his early musical talents in the church choir. Morris further honed his skills at the Juilliard School of Music and Dillard University. Following his formal education, he embarked on his entertainment career in Broadway musicals. Featuring in productions such as Hallelujah Baby and Ain't Supposed to Die a Natural Death. Transitioning seamlessly to television and film, Morris joined the original cast of Saturday Night Live, leaving his mark on the popular sketch comedy show from 1975 to 1980. His standout character on the show was the fictional Dominican baseball player, Chico Escuela. Garrett Morris experienced a breakthrough in film with his role in the 1975 movie Cooley High. His filmography includes notable appearances in productions such as Car Wash, How High, and The Long Shot, among others. Beyond the big screen, Morris left his mark on various sit- Notably, he portrayed Junior Uncle Junior King on The Jamie Foxx Show for a five-year stint. Additionally, he took on the role of Earl Washington on CBS's Two Broke from 2011 to 2017. In the iconic 90s series Martin, Morris played Stan Winters, Martin's boss at the WZU radio station, marking a significant contribution to the show's success. The series premiered in 1992, and Morris remained a part of the cast until 1995. My brother, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Brother Shabazz. What's up, boss? You see, the man arrested me for this petty crime. Morris's portrayal of Stan on Martin endeared him to viewers, but behind the scenes, the relationship between Morris and Lawrence was reportedly fragile, often fraught with tension. The breaking point seems to have been a tragic incident that led to a final rift. In the midst of filming the second season of Martin in 1994, Morris fell victim to a robbery attempt in South Central Los Angeles. As he walked to his car, two men approached him, demanding money. Reacting swiftly due to his first-degree black belt skills, Morris managed to counter the assailants, but one of them fired two shots, hitting him in the chest and stomach. Following the incident, Morris underwent surgery at the hospital. Despite news coverage of the event, none of his Martin co-stars publicly addressed it. A producer made the decision that Morris would not return to the show post-recovery. Morris learned about his departure from the series when he received a script explaining that his character had sold the radio station and moved to China. Garrett Morris enjoys a distinguished and extensive acting career, and his role in the beloved 90s comedy series 
series, Martin, has secured him a special place in the hearts of fans. However, viewers were taken aback when he abruptly disappeared as a full-time cast member after the second season, sparking curiosity and leaving many puzzled about the circumstances surrounding his departure. I'm Garrett Morris, talking to all you white Americans about the way black people have been treated in America. Now, I know a lot of you feel guilty, and you should. <laughs> Morris made only one additional appearance in another episode during the show's run. Following his limited involvement, he revealed that his departure from the series was the outcome of being let go by none other than the show's primary producer and lead star, Martin Lawrence. The um, person who was producing uh, Martin uh, decided to fire me. Contrary to certain perceptions, it appears that Martin Lawrence did not harbor intentions of causing harm to anyone. Instead, his tumultuous journey through numerous challenges took a toll on his mental well-being. Dave Chappelle has been candid in discussing Martin's experiences, providing insight into both his struggles with mental health and the darker aspects of the entertainment industry. Martin Lawrence is the guy that showed everybody you can make it from D.C. to Hollywood. And, uh, I had a personal stake in his success. Every time he did something, Reportedly, Martin Lawrence's condition reached a critical point marked by extreme weakness and depression. In August 1999, he faced a significant health scare when he fell into a three-day coma after collapsing due to heat exhaustion while jogging in exceptionally hot conditions. This incident occurred as he was preparing for his role in Big Mama's house and was wearing heavy clothing, including a plastic suit. His condition was severe enough to warrant hospitalization, with his body temperature reaching 107 degree F, 42 degree C, ultimately requiring the use of a ventilator. Despite these challenges, Martin Lawrence has received substantial support from his fans. One of the wrote, Martin was on that Richard Pryor level when it pertains to his storytelling skills. Y'all I miss Def Jam. Martin is still awesome. Another one added, Martin Lawrence is a legend haha, -ha. a complete great. Kevin Hart looks up to all of those OGs like Carlin, Harvey, Murphy, Lawrence, Max, Cedric, etc. The greats. Morris has expressed his frustration regarding the situation, but he has never publicly revealed the person responsible for his abrupt termination from the show. But in a recent interview with Netflix's Strong Black Lead, Morris said his departure from the show was unexpected. But the man who produced Martin basically was Martin Lawrence. And after I had no bad words with him still to this day, I do not understand why he decided to fire me while I was in Daniel Freeman Hospital. Not only fired me while I was in the hospital itself, but then went around telling people in interviews that he came and sat by my bed and cried and stuff like that. The same person. Despite harboring anger over his departure, Morris chose to accept the loss and move forward. He attributed his exit to Lawrence's apparent dislike for him, coupled with Lawrence's role as the lead producer, which left Morris reluctant to fight for his job. In total, Morris featured in over 50 episodes of Martin and made a guest appearance during the third season, marking his final stint on the show. Undeterred, Morris continued his acting career and secured a role in The Jamie Foxx Show, just a year after parting ways with Martin. In an interview with Netflix's Strong Black Leads, Morris candidly discussed his firing from Martin and admitted to being unaware of the exact reasons behind it. Lawrence, the lead producer of the show, has never publicly responded to any of Morris's claims. Adding to Martin's list of accomplishments, it's worth noting that, at that juncture, we were just a month away from the debut of his own eponymous primetime sitcom. This show would go on to attract an average of over 11 million viewers during its first season and eventually secure a position as one of the most iconic sitcoms in history. Witnessing Martin juggle such an array of responsibilities serves as a reminder of his undeniable work ethic, akin to what Kevin Hart is currently demonstrating. Martin had scaled similar heights and achieved a significant milestone when he was chosen as the host of Saturday Night Live in 1994. Yeah, man, man, oh man, look at all these white people. No, I mean, I guess this ain't the Def Jam, right? So I, I guess I better be cool. Huh? I got some black folks out there to back me up, though. That moment marked both a significant milestone and an unfortunate ending, all stemming from a single incident. Regrettably, this incident led to Martin Lawrence's banishment from Saturday Night Live. Chris Rock himself once recounted, at every gig, there would be some opening act that would try to make noise, but by the time I was off stage, people had forgotten. One night in Chicago, as usual, I was the headliner, and on this night, my opening act was an up-and-coming comic named Martin.
Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence's stand-up comedy during the 90s was as riveting as watching the 2016 Golden State Warriors in action. Every week, his performances on Def Jam were a thrilling blend of electrifying, unpredictable, controversial, and unfiltered content. With a commanding presence, he had the audience fervently chanting, Go Martin, at the beginning of each show. Yet, Martin's comedic style didn't universally resonate. His inaugural concert film, You So Crazy, debuted in 1994 and initially earned an NC-17 rating due to its explicit content. So one day then in them three months, your girl comes by. And ain't cause they like they ain't hung out with you in a while. Girl, the f you been, we ain't hung out with you. I mean, what's up? Would you hang out with us? I mean, who is this guy? The film's distributor eventually opted to sell the movie to another company, which then released it as an unrated film. However, Martin's struggles with censorship were only beginning. In that very year, he encountered the golden opportunity every comedian dreams of, hosting Saturday Night Live. Unfortunately for Lawrence, this would also be his final time hosting the enduring variety show. He found himself banned for life after delivering a set of jokes that NBC deemed excessive inappropriate for live television. Yeah! You <laughs> fired up. What's up? I thought I wasn't coming back. She. During his opening monologue, Lawrence embarked on a rant touching on female hygiene, humorously advising the audience about the importance of proper cleanliness. Evidently, his jokes took a raunchy turn, which proved to be beyond the limits of acceptability for a live network broadcast. You got some beautiful women, but you got some out there that, uh, I gotta say something. Um, <laughs> some of you are not washing your ass properly. Seemingly disavowing his views, the network's response suggested a clear disconnect with Lawrence's expressed sentiments. In the years that ensued, Lawrence's absence from the show became noticeable, including being left out of Eddie Murphy's highly acclaimed reunion episode. Contemplating his performance shortly after the unfavorable headlines, Lawrence remarked, If I don't know anything else, I know what it takes to make a person laugh. People have to have the right to laugh, or else you're going to have a lot more of us going crazy. If you can get past the language and have fun with what I'm talking about, I'm going to help keep you mentally healthy. Lawrence asserts that he employed the same jokes during a rehearsal of the show without encountering any objections. However, the network presents a contrasting perspective, asserting that he veered into unscripted and unapproved content. Following the East Coast broadcast of the show, the monologue underwent significant editing due to the influx of nearly 200 complaints from viewers in the Eastern region. In a 1994 interview with the LA Times, a mere two weeks after the incident, Martin expressed that he held no animosity towards NBC. They didn't want to fly me private. I I wanted to go private. It was it's politics. So, mm -hmm. you know. but I but I've learned from that from, from now, and and I would do something different. In 1997, Tisha Campbell, reported to be Martin Lawrence's girlfriend at the time, filed a lawsuit against Lawrence, alleging harassment both on and off the screen. The allegations in the lawsuit were severe, encompassing incidents such as battery, verbal mistreatment, Lawrence yelling and issuing threats on set, unnecessary outbursts, inappropriate groping during bed scenes, and even attempting to initiate intimate encounters with her, among a range of other claims. The lawsuit brought forth a tumultuous period in both their professional and personal relationship. She couldn't be there. If, 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 if she was there, he couldn't be there. So I knew that much. But, um, you know, all the other stuff that, that they say that happened. The reference to Martin's outburst might not be startling to some, given that in 1996, he had been arrested after being discovered wandering the streets of L.A. with a gun while loudly exclaiming that someone was attempting to harm him. You know, all the other stuff that, that they say that happened, I, man, I never seen that, man. According to one witness, he was yelling, fight, you know, don't give up, fight the power, or something like that. He was shouting some obscenities or something. The police were forcefully putting their arms around him, like trying to hold him down, because he was fighting so much and yelling. He was like a madman. I was like, that's Martin Lawrence. I couldn't believe it. His anger and lack of control escalated to the point where he kicked and shattered a marble tile wall near Tisha's hotel room. As soon as news of Tisha's lawsuit became public, Martin Lawrence issued a statement via vehemently refuting all her accusations. He implied that he was being dragged into her disagreement with HBO, asserting his innocence in the matter. You know, people ask me that all the time, man. Only thing I know is when they say action, just chilling. When they say cut, catch out them all. That's all I know, man. His statement read as, Martin has long been Tisha's champion and protector, and is thus deeply hurt by these allegations. 
his statement said. There is no merit to the lawsuit, and it will be vigorously defended. Tisha eventually reached a settlement in the lawsuit nearly four months later, leading her to return to the set for the final two episodes filming in April 1997. However, a unique stipulation was imposed. Martin was prohibited from being on set during Tisha's filming sessions. Remarkably, in the concluding one-hour episode, the writers and editors had to ingeniously craft scenes to portray them as a loving couple on screen, despite the reality that they never shared the same room. The filming process must have been remarkably awkward and if the official allegations held any truth, the discomfort experienced by Tisha can only be imagined. So, Biggie, how, how your audition's coming? Why you want to know, Jenny? You are not auditioning? No, I'm not. I did not say that. No, um, I was just making conversation. The cast of the show Martin is nearly inseparable from thoughts about the series itself. The on-screen chemistry among the actors played a pivotal role in establishing the enduring impact the show has had on its fans over the years. However, behind the scenes, the dynamic wasn't always as harmonious. Despite the accolades the show received for its humor-filled storylines and the camaraderie among the cast, Rumors of mistreatment emerged, particularly involving comedian Martin Lawrence, the show's central figure. For me, I was in a whole nother space, you know what I mean? I always wish the best for people and hope that they grow and, and, and you know, I don't wish nothing bad on nobody, you know what I mean? Carl Anthony Payne, recognized for his portrayal of Martin's endearingly dim-witted best friend Cole Brown, openly acknowledged the discrepancies between appearances and reality during an interview with ThisIs50.com in 2015. Payne revealed that the situation was quite different from what it seemed on the surface. Initially, everything appeared to be going smoothly, and there were no evident issues between him and Martin Lawrence. Payne described the environment as a great place to work. However, the dynamics shifted when Martin started mistreating him, drastically altering the work atmosphere. It's like a relationship, right? So imagine if you were in a, in a relationship that ended badly with somebody, you know? That was then, right? And now, if that person is still around... He further said, we had issues. Martin had issues with himself, really. I think he was battling his own demons. Furthermore, Ernest Thomas, renowned for his portrayal of Raj on the beloved TV show What's Happening, made a surprising revelation. In a jaw-dropping statement, Thomas leveled some truly startling accusations against Lawrence. The more the success came, you can't get a hold of Thomas candidly revealed intriguing aspects of his experiences with fellow actor Martin Lawrence, offering a unique perspective on the entertainment industry. He delved into the dynamic between them, touching on issues of fame, arrogance, and personal challenges. Uh, yeah, he did get a start on what's happening. Who knew, you know? Uh, but, and I was, you know, I, I accepted him with open arms because, you know, the other cast members didn't want him. To begin, Ernest Thomas looked back on the initial stages of Martin Lawrence's foray into the entertainment industry. Thomas acknowledged that Lawrence got his first significant opportunity on What's Happening, a piece of information that hadn't gained widespread attention. He had just done uh, Star Search, but he didn't win. He didn't win Star Search. So his, his first professional gig was What's Happening. Okay. Now. Thomas shared the story of extending a warm welcome to Lawrence, even in the face of opposition from other cast members. He hinted at Lawrence's unmistakable comedic talent, making Thomas's choice to support him almost instinctive. But I, I was there with him when he was turned down by the uh, comedy store three times. Yeah, but that was it. He got his start on there. In that era, Martin Lawrence emerged as a promising star full of potential. His magnetic charisma and undeniable talent swiftly drew the attention of those in his vicinity, including Ernest Lee Thomas. The atmosphere on the set of What's Happening Now was infused with camaraderie, and Lawrence's humor and vibrant energy breathed new life into the show. Nevertheless, as Martin Lawrence's career reached new heights, evident transformations unfolded. Thomas skillfully depicted how Lawrence's demeanor underwent a noticeable shift, a transformation characterized by a burgeoning sense of arrogance and an ever-widening disconnect from reality. This evolution became increasingly conspicuous as Lawrence ascended the ladder of fame and success. With each rung he climbed, Lawrence delved deeper into the realm of celebrity. You know, and it wasn't like he was, oh, he was just incredibly funny. You know, you know, now, of course, I love the Martin show, but he just, yeah. it, it wasn't there. Spotlight evidently influenced Martin Lawrence's personality. Once a humble and motivated young artist, he now showed signs of conceit and self-importance. Ernest shared a compelling anecdote about a missed chance to collaborate with Lawrence. He described how Lawrence, to Thomas's surprise and disappointment, turned down a lucrative offer for a film project. And not only did he not talk, he could at least call me himself and said, no, you got the agent calling me. 
Ernest went further to explain the incident, saying, We made the offer. We had offered him $500,000 for 13 days. Never heard from the agent after that. This incident served as a glaring example of how success can sometimes sever the connections between celebrities and their roots. The missed opportunity became a poignant reminder of how fame's alluring charm can cloud one's judgment. Lawrence's choice to reject the offer had consequences that extended beyond the immediate project, reflecting a broader transformation in his priorities and a distorted perception of his value in the industry. Fans are convinced that there might be some truth in Ernest's claims of Lawrence being blinded by fame. One of his fans wrote, used to always see Mr. Mr. Ernest at the Pasadena CA Library all the time. I would speak, and he was always kind. Another one added, It's a fact, money will change you. And if you didn't know that's because you haven't experienced it, it's true what they say though, mo money, mo problems. So given Martin's history, it is not hard for people to consider him as a who has just arrogance. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.